Okay, uh, welcome to the W3C uh, Technical Working Group call for Thursday, 26th of May, 2022. Um, this is going to be a somewhat unusual call in that we are not going to be uh, probably debating much about the specification. The proposal is near completion. Uh, it's near release for uh, final review and finalization. Uh, but before we start circulating it for comment, uh, Nick would like to refresh everybody's memory about the contents of the document because it has been a couple of months uh, just to prepare everybody to make an informed review and also will hopefully uh, give us tips for implementation or approaches to implementation where appropriate. Um, so this will be a somewhat unusual call. It will be much more uh, pragmatically and step-by-step -step focused and it will be circulated along with the final draft of the document ready for review. Uh, before we kick off, however, with that, uh, if I can just ask everyone on the call to introduce themselves in the order in which they appear on my screen. So I'll start with uh, you, Matthew. Uh, Matt Davies from Sports League and Venue Management Software. Thanks, Matthew. Debbie. Debbie Giordano for everyone active. Nathan. Uh, Nathan Salter from uh, BookTech and Plaguewinder. Thank you, Nathan. Other Tim. Tim Corby, Engagement Consultant at the Open Data Institute. Uh, Nick? Uh, Nick Evans from IMIN. And finally, I'm Timothy Hill, um, uh, Principal Technologist with the Open Data Institute. Uh, and with that, I will hand over to uh, Nick to uh, review the document and walk us through it. Uh, Nick, do you want to share your screen? Uh, yeah, I will go ahead and do that. One second. Uh, so you should be able to, oh no, wait. Great, can you see that there? Looks good. Excellent. Um, so uh, first thing to do is, um, let me put this somewhere. Uh, great. So yeah, first thing to do is to um, just maybe run you over the high level structure of the doc and some suggested ways of reading it. Um, so when you open the document up, there's a little button on the left hand side here you can press, which is the document outline that exists in the, the specification format that this will eventually be in, which is the W3C spec tool. Um, but we're obviously simulating that in this Google Doc. Um, so you can press that button and you can see that you can get to the contents here on the left hand side. Um, and uh, so, yeah, just I guess going to the top. You'll see it's very similar in format to the um, the way that the specs are currently structured. Um, the idea is this is kind of a lift and shift from here into the formal specification. So um, we're not expecting much to change. The only thing that, that that will change is the numbering. So you can see the numbers here are A, B, C, D, E. Um, I've left the numbers as they are, and the intention here, and welcome feedback on this, the intention here is this, this document, this final draft document, would re retain the numbers here, C, D, E, et cetera. Um, and when we copy this into the formal um, respec W3C document, it will actually get numbers rather than letters. But the reason to keep the Cs, et cetera, in here is because uh, we, don't, um, uh, we don't currently have, well, this document's been referenced by quite a few people uh, at different stages of their implementations. So the numbers haven't changed from the conversations we've had today, which means if anyone's referencing a number in this document, that reference will still be valid, um, even though obviously there's been some restructuring around those things. Um, so uh, I've left that in in case there was that going on. I guess we don't know who, we don't know what we don't know about who's actually looking at this and what they're doing with it. I, I just see people popping in and out of it all the time. Um, and so, so yeah, so that that that's uh, that's it. And the, the structure of the, the various parts is is kind of similar to what we had before. Um, the um, the uh, operations piece is where the, all the detail of of what's actually happening at a high level is going on, and the model is is included and specified, and then the endpoints as well. And then we've got a bit of detail about what happens to the open data feed and the open booking API behavior. Um, these are the sections we've walked through over a period of, of months um, last year. So um, when we look at the content, you should be familiar with um, what we've been uh, what we've been covering previously. 
Um, so, uh, so there's that. Um, the other thing to highlight is, and I think we should probably send this around as an email if we haven't already, Tim, um, there is a need for everyone that's been part of this process to just sign a, uh, a just tick a box in a, on, a, on a form basically that says that you've, you've participated. This is to do with intellectual property and various things, just to make sure that the spec itself, it's a W3C process. The spec itself is, is um, rubber stamped from that perspective. So there's a link here to do that. Um, it's, uh, it's a very uh, straightforward uh, thing. You just go to, uh, to here and the community group, if you haven't already in, just join it. Uh, and then you'll have your, your name on this list of, of people who are on here. Um, and by joining it, you'll have to, you'll have to tick the box to say that you're either individually or corporately um, happy with the, the agreement. Um, so, uh, so that's a note there. Um, obviously, as you read through this document, uh, uh, please do feel free to continue to comment on it. Um, the uh, solicitation of feedback, unlike the document when it gets moved into um, its formal template, um, this is still a Google Doc, so you know, do feel free to comment on it as this uh, indicates, um, and uh, and we can, um, and then that'd be easy to resolve any any um, last kind of tweaks or changes that come up um, in this version. Um, so the idea is that what we'll do is we'll move it from uh, a final draft uh, to a candidate release, um, and that that will then be a candidate release that we can reference and build against, and and all those good things. Um, so. Final draft will remain in this document. This document will then signpost to uh, the candidate release um, in using the proper template uh, when that goes up. Um, hopefully, all being well, we can get this done um, pretty pretty quickly. Ideally, by the end of June, um, have have that in a good place um, and uh, in the formal template. But I guess we'll have to see how we go with the review and what comes up, um, and make sure that we've circulated it widely um uh, especially before the next call and we've got a bit of time now two weeks so hopefully it's enough time for people to uh to attend the next call um so uh i think that's that's that and then as just going through the kind of um there's I, i've added some and just signing some pushing the things that I've, I've added in here uh, as you kind of look through the, the introduction section uh, is, is new. The scope and requirements is not. They've just been rejigged to follow the standard format. Um, whenever you see a little yellow box, uh, these yellow boxes, I've tried to retain as much of the uh, information about where why we've come to decisions and links to the various W3C calls. I know they're not all up on the website yet, but we're working on doing that so that all the calls will be up there so they can be reviewed and linked to this. So the idea being that, um, It'll be easy to track back at decisions that have been made along the process. Um, and if anyone looking at this draft, when we move this into the final template, basically all the yellow boxes will just remove, and then you'll just be left with the, the spec um, and without those additional, additional bits. Um, so that's uh, because they're really only of interest to people who have been in the process or interested in the background um, and uh, to, to some of the decisions that have been made. So, um, so yeah, but then that, that all gets retained in this, this document, which will stay here and be referenced in, in, in various places. So uh, if anyone's interested, they can come back to this and, and, and look at it as a previous version and uh, look at what we've done here. Um, so yeah, so got the, the scope in here. Uh, we've, we probably remember this list of 10 things uh, that, that we, we had at the top of the previous document. Um, we spent some time talking about I've also uh, moved some of the out of scope things to follow the format into things that have been out of scope by design that we've agreed on around the, um, you know, the things like the payment processing or uh, access to all membership data um, and uh, pricing at the browse stage being uh, fully accurate in all cases, things like that. Um, this specification is uh, as, as other specs in open active land follow. Uh, this is dependent on three specifications and, and versions of those specifications. So this is dependent on RPDE version one, modeling spec version two, and the open booking API version one. Um, so this is not uh, this is not part of the open booking API. You'll notice customer accounts API is the name of the specification. And so rather than um, making the open booking API even bigger than it already is, and potentially confusing implementers with trying to figure out 
what they're implementing if they're being told to implement one versus the other. Um, this is a clearly then distinct specification that they can implement um, that um, uh, goes alongside the, the booking API um, and um, will hopefully be um, uh, the, a useful addition to the endpoints that are specified inside it. Um, and so, um, so yeah, um, and as I mentioned, the tooling currently only supports these three. Um, there is an ambition to, to extend the tooling to support this uh, specification as well. Um, but we, uh, we haven't got confirmation on the timescales of the tooling. Um, if anyone's watching this or anyone here has a, uh, a kind of need and says, you know, these are the timescales in which we will need that tooling built. Um, I, 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 I wouldn't go as far as to say we can, we can definitely hit those timescales. Um, but I think knowing that now would be very useful because we can certainly work to those deadlines if they are their deadlines and figure out how exactly we're going to uh, make that happen within the context of all the various organizations involved. Um, but if it is a blocker, certainly uh, do please raise that in terms of needing the tooling, the validators ready for a, a certain date. Um, and uh, I know that some organizations watching this will be implementing booking first um, and then going on to implement the membership in a second phase. So you, you should be able to, uh, if you have an idea about your plans there, then you know, letting us know when that second phase starts would be very helpful so that we can uh, get to um, uh, yeah, planning that tooling. Um, oh, sorry, can I, just, can I just rewind a little bit, Nick? So with regard to the specification dependencies, I agree we don't want to try to squeeze this all into the Open Booking API document. Um, but is the separation clean enough in the API endpoints to allow for that? Would people have to rework um, endpoints in the Open Booking API spec once they do membership? Uh, yeah, that's true. There's a specific part of this. Uh, in fact, uh, there's there, there, there are impacts on this spec in terms okay. of the open data feeds and also the open booking API behavior. And so there are some, there are some changes they would need to make there. Okay. So um, we need to think a bit about how we articulate that distinction. Yeah. 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 That's a good point. Yeah, absolutely. Um, to make it clear what the, um, what the impact on both of those is, I suppose, Interestingly, the open booking API similarly has impacts on the uh, open data being published. So I guess there's like a tree, you know, um, the way that you do RPDE is affected by the modeling spec. Uh, the way that you do the modeling spec is affected by the booking API. <laughs> the way that you do the booking API is somewhat affected by this specification. Um, so there's, a, there's an interplay, I suppose. Maybe we need some guidance to meet, make that kind of clear yeah, I think I think presented like that, it almost seems like you could implement, you know, one without the other, um, and then you you know, progressively, and you were sort of done with that piece incrementally. Whereas if it's a little more interdependent than that, we just have to make it clear. Yeah. 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 I mean, I mean, in in fairness, you can and and following the track of current current implementers, um, you can uh, implement this and then passes the tests, you know, implement this and then it passes the tests, implement that and it passes the tests and then implement this spec and it passes the tests kind of, uh, you, you do need to go back and make changes to things you've already done, but um, you're adding features rather than changing what's there. So it, it, it's um, the open booking API will still be compatible and uh, will work exactly as it does, even with this implemented on top. It's not gonna change any existing behavior, it will add additional behavior that um, can be used if uh, uh, if the implementation supports this uh, from a broker perspective. Okay, let's maybe unpack that a little bit between ourselves later on then, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, happy to pick that up. I'll make a note, uh, definitely. Uh, in fact, let me make a note uh, here so that we can pick that up. So um, uh, guidance around dependencies and implementation of that approach. Uh, cool. Um, okay, but sorry, just so, um, discussion with 
Okay. So uh, that's great. Uh, yeah, and so um, thanks for that. That's very helpful. So um, uh, yeah, um, some stuff on conformance, um, and then we're into the main um, the main bit of the spec. So these three sections actually will be replaced by some some slightly better diagrams. Uh, there's some diagrams in here, which I think there's there's a comment to improve the diagrams. I haven't done the diagrams yet, although the rest of the spec is um, is uh, in a pretty good place. So those were left till the end. Um, so there should be some, well, hopefully slightly clearer uh, diagrams and connections between things that are explained here. And then uh, we get into the operations. So the operations are um, the uh, uh, the different um, aspects that we we probably spoke about last time uh, at length. Um, so these are all the different things that you can do, and uh, in many of these places, uh, there's links to the sections that relate to those across in in the different um, uh, other areas of the spec. So this is almost the operations of the high level view. Um, similar to the way that the booking spec is, is written and the modeling specs are written. There's a high level view of what's going on and then it links to uh, the section where you can find more information. Um, and in places where you can see there's guidance, uh, yeah, that's, that's gonna be extracted out of this and maybe put in some separate documentation somewhere. Um, uh, so, <laughs> Just showing you that there's a few. Actually, there are a few bits to just remove here that I need to put that into guidance or something separately. Um, so that covers the main um, operations, and then in the model, uh, again, you can see it's it's very similar to what we've gone through before. Um, cleaned up now, so that many of the changes that we proposed and went through in detail uh, in the previous calls have been have been added in here and amended. Um, there is a errors section now, which includes all the error subclasses. Um, it's difficult to make this section complete without implementation experience, um, but we can certainly have a go. So if you do read through this and not spot an error that's missing, um, try to make it consistent where the errors are all mentioned in the, in the endpoint section. So you can, and then they're just referenced centrally here with a description. So following the previous um, specs approach. Um, so, uh, this isn't a complete section yet. I've got a little bit more to do on that uh, tomorrow to just fill out the rest of these. It gives you an idea about what's what's going on. Um, and uh, and so that this this will include all the errors. And then into the endpoints, we have uh, this is the uh, the as we talked about at length before, these are the endpoints that have been defined. Um, so these now are, um, I think all complete. Um, and so uh, there's a um, there's some uh, GitHub discussions that are linked in here. You'll see um, these are the discussions relating to the particular things that uh, we already talked about. Uh, so it, it's just uh, if you are interested in commenting on those or have further thoughts on those, obviously you can do that. Uh, the idea will be when we go ahead and if everyone's happy with this, that we'll then just close off those discussions, assuming there's no further comments on those. Um, so uh, do when you're going through this, bear in mind that those discussions are are there. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll assume that no no um, news is good news in, in respect to uh, any comments that, are, that you might have on the top. Um, the outcome of those discussions is reflected in the document. Um, so you can see if you're happy with what you see, then you know you should be happy with the the, the discussion. Um, so yeah, so we've gone through uh, this, and uh, so uh, yeah, more there's uh, comments around more diagrams to add in here, but um, uh, yeah, so that's that kind of gives you a sense of of, of this uh, this section, and I know we've gone through a lot of this stuff before. Um, and then the open data feeds is uh, really the changes that are necessary to the feed to make it work with this spec. Um, so again, things that we've already gone through before. Um, and um, uh, it's worth noting that 
actually, it's a good point. It's worth noting, having just said that, there are two sections. Uh, I've named everyone active in here, but that might be unfair because it probably came from other people as well. But there are, there are two sections in here where I've written this. Um, we added it as a result of feedback from everyone active. But I don't think we've yet covered it in a call. We might have done, I've forgotten about it, but uh, a late cancellation policy um, was a discussion that we, we had with everyone active and that seemed to be a useful addition. So there are two sections here that we've, we've added that we can, we can go over if it's, if it's helpful, hopefully quite self-explanatory and very straightforward. Um, but that's what this, this review note is. So um, just do, do uh, pay attention to that when you have a look. Um, let's see if you're also happy with that, the related discussion is, is, is there as well. Um, and uh, yeah, and then there's the, there's the changes to the open booking API that uh, are required. So um, this goes through and there's, yeah, you'll see there's some further changes we need to make some simplifications, just remove some of these bits, um, which we had to do. And then, um, and yeah, and then, uh, yeah, there's the two additional everyone active notes, um, just highlighting those. Um, some considerations to the guidance have just been fully moved into yellow boxes, so they'll just be removed from the spec, um, but again, kept them there just for traceability for anyone that comes looking at it later. Um, and then finally, we've got the Open, open ID Connect section, um, which uh, we, I think we talked about towards the end of our, our time uh, last time. Uh, I hope we have, I'm not sure if, uh, uh, if we went through all of the detail of this, but certainly, uh, again, please do have a look and see if you've got any questions. We can cover that specifically, maybe in the next call. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, and that is, uh, that's it. There's a little bit of um, stuff that isn't in here, which is probably gonna be H, uh, where uh, we'll just need to put a little bit about versions and some other kind of, uh, general spec stuff, which is probably broadly applicable, but extensions, versions, things like that, but how they're handled by the spec, but that, that will all be consistent from open booking. So there's nothing, um, should be nothing crazy in there, but that will be a, an additional section at the end. Um, and uh, that's, so that's the overview first, and um, without talking about implementation stuff. Um, so, uh, I guess anyone who's listening, um, you can you can stop here and go and read it if you want, uh, and uh, uh, and then but I'll I'll pause here for questions and then we can we can spend a few minutes just looking at the um, the implementation stuff if that's useful. Any I suppose. I suppose I've got a very broad, uh, this is this is less a question about the document than about sort of process. Um, you mentioned the need for the guidance document and the guidance document is gonna contain a lot of out of band, well, a lot of discussion about things that have to be agreed out of band before implementation happens. Um, so for any organization that's new to the space, that guidance is kind of non-optional. Um, Specifically with regard to Gladstone and everyone active, are we confident that they could proceed without that guidance document or do we really need to present that alongside this? Uh, it's a good question. Um, I don't know if it needs to be a, alongside this as well. I think, I think uh, documentation tooling and the reference implementation will be very useful for implements uh, in general. Uh, whether that needs to exist alongside the spec to be agreed. Um, I guess given that the set, there's, there are some, some sections in here that reference guidance as, like, as such as this one. Mm. Um, so it might be that we, we, we will be content to sign this off as a document with the guidance almost embedded in it um, so that that's in one place and we've kind of agreed it. And then we might extract the guidance out um, for the version for the, as we said, to publish the the actual candidate release um, and then there's a question about documentation and putting that guidance into probably a, a kind of wider piece of docs that includes guidance and um, reference and different things how does that sound 
Yeah, I mean, my, my concern is, is purely um, if Gladstone is being blocked by the lack of finalization of this document, are they also going to be blocked by the lack of guidance? Or are those out of band discussions already progressed enough that, that this can be deferred for the moment? I guess a good question for Gladstone. It's more, of, it? it's more of an operational concern, you know, in terms of, yeah. in terms of, I feel like the standard is the standard, the guidance is the guidance, the tooling is the tooling, and those two should only, those three should only be loosely coupled in terms of releases and so on and so forth. So I'm just wondering really about the pragmatics of it. Mm, mm. Well, yeah, it's a good, it's a question. That's for, a question uh, for the next call, I guess. For, um, for, yeah, for Gladstone, whether they're, they're blocked on that as well. Yeah. Um, and I guess it's similarly good to highlight if they are blocked, so we can uh, we can prioritize as with the tooling. Okay, yeah, let's. Uh, I'll flag that up in communications with them regarding review. Then, okay. Does anyone else have any uh, thoughts or anything at all? No, no I'll I'll go through the document and just. Put in loads of comments. <laughs> Excellent. That's what we want. All the comments. Uh, okay. Great. Uh, so, um, is this what you were expecting? I mean, what I've what I've presented here is there anything in there that you're thinking, gosh, there's huge X missing or Y missing or where's the Z? No. Okay, that's helpful. Great. Okay. Well, we're we're making progress. It's only fifteen thousand words, so uh, it's not too not too hefty. About half the size of the booking spec, um, which is good, um, uh, considering there's a lot of repetitive stuff in there. So, uh, great, great. Uh, so shall we, um, I mean, in terms of implementation approach, Matt, is that, I think that, that was what you were um, asking about before. Um, and um, that anyone then watching this can, can crack on. Uh, what, um, but what are you, uh, if I, well, I mean, are we talking about the approach to implementing these endpoints, which I can, I could talk about or uh, what more broadly or? Uh, yeah, I mean, there presumably will be things that need to be done in a certain order in your mind, you know, find an open ID package, then start to work on adding a customer, then work on updating a customer, you know, uh, presumably there's sort of, and then modify the feeds to accept the authentication token. Presumably there's sort of an order to implementation that it's, it's, it's certainly not necessarily to go through in detail on this call. Um, but which would probably form a similar sort of guide, guidance document as the, you know, one week to implementing booking tutorial that, that, that exists. Mm. There'll be a similar one that's like uh, steps to implementing um, customer accounts API. Um, so again, it doesn't, I, I'm not, I threw it on you right at the start of the, of the call. Um, so if, if you haven't already got in mind anything for that then let's let's leave it but if you've already been thinking about this and know that these are the sort of steps then I, it would just be useful to know your thoughts on that yeah sure so okay well so i, I think and and this is it's the, the other thing to mention is that um we we worked with legend to implement a previous iteration of this um so i can talk to that a bit from our experience there um, and obviously that that will need to change a little bit given the the progress that we've made with this now but that's um, that's part of the understanding that we had when we went, went ahead with that work way earlier than um, others have so um so the the uh, approach there was as you exactly i mean you pretty much said it to be honest but <laughs> yeah that, that start with open id uh, and a package around that uh, and so you know that's identity server in, in the in the legend case and obviously that's already built into uh, what is um, in the in the uh, reference implementation anyway for multi um, multi seller authentication um, other uh, as I know we've uh, chatted on slack others are available that do that um, and so 
um, starting with that is uh, is helpful because uh, some of the um, the well the customer endpoints all basically need you to have a customer to start with. So you know um, starting with that means that you can authenticate and create a customer or or log in with an existing customer. Um, starting with the already logged in customer is probably the easiest of those um, because you've got that and then you can go ahead and, and implement all of these against the existing customer um, and that's also out of the box with most OpenID Connect implementations so you can just start with their lo login um, and then when, once you've got these working you can do I think all of these are just different credit options basically are just credit operations <coughs> on the um, uh, sorry. Excuse me. Um, a different CRUD operation is on the customer. <coughs> and so uh, that should be, uh, yeah, fairly straightforward. Uh, so once, and, and because all of these endpoints stand alone, they don't depend on anything in the open booking API or the orders feed. So you're able to just kind of crack on with those and they were not that difficult. Honestly, with them, um, when we did this with uh, with Legend, um, the the complexities were not in in the, this part of the, the work. Um, right, th those being sort of standalone. Did you find any um, sort of third party tooling for that side of things? I, I don't know if you know, um, just a test suite they could run across and in an Open ID Connect world do all of these operations. Uh, we used a very rudimentary uh, set of tests written in Postman, uh, so it was. I would, I would, I would hope that we'll we'll be able to extend the Open Active Test Suite to cover this in the way that the other, that, you know, the other endpoints are covered. Um, is is that Postman collection still available potentially, and could be? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just did or something? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, yeah, um, sounds like a good thing to share alongside this. Um, it will need to be updated slightly, of course, because of the, um, the different endpoints in here. It's a useful uh, kind of starting point, I would say. Yeah, yeah, for sure, absolutely. Um, so, so uh, yeah. So, and when once those are done, and obviously that includes the models which will be needed for those endpoints, you can then uh, adding these these bits to the feeds. Um, is 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 a probably a, a good next step um, because that would be the prerequisite to any open booking changes, um, and there's yeah, and whatever data is needed behind the scenes to support these. Whereas these endpoints here are all just making changes to whatever you've already got in your system. It's possible that for entitlements to work, you might need to think about adding additional fields. So there might be some some more underlying changes there depending on the way that entitlements mapping works in your system. So there's that. Um, and then after that, there's the changes to the open booking API behavior. This is actually one where um, the, cu the current .NET tooling especially um, does require some changes to make that work. Um, and um, so I think there's a branch somewhere which we used for the legend work, which we can try to um, to bring into the main uh, the main repo which would be a good thing to do actually um, that allows for some of this to happen it does re it does require some changes to the uh, underlying um, SDK structures that are there um, not enormous ones uh, but necessary ones um, so yeah so that's that's the, the open booking API then would just be the changes to that um, and yet, because the .NET stuff would need to be changed in one place, assuming that the implementer had used .NET, as I know, um, Bastion will be as well. This stuff should be reasonably straightforward because it's all part of the same package. Um, and to be honest, implementing these, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, get, once we get the model in here for these, um, it's not going to be a huge amount of... Um, uh, work in the SDK or however else to just support these because they're just CRUD operations using a standard model. And so, um, yeah, so it's, it's probably not, 
not much work in the SDK side at all to do that. Um, or, or in fact, do it without the SDK because they're just they're just CRUD models, and the models will be updated. So, uh, yeah. So I think probably releasing this when we're all happy with it, alongside Postman changes, alongside the model changes to the .NET and other libraries, um, is probably the thing to do, so that implementers can use the models within the endpoints, um, and then. So if we do those three things together, and then potentially a, a next step would be documentation and guidance and the test suite tooling to cover that and, and reference implementation as a, maybe a kind of step two of, uh, of things that we, we would need to do to support this. Uh, yeah, and so I think that, that's, and that's all of it, I think. Um, uh, I, I, I mentioned open ID already at the beginning, so um, that this is all about configuring the uh, whatever you have in terms of a library correctly to, to do all the things it's talking about. So open ID custom parameters can be easily specified at least within the libraries I've looked at so far. So just be a case of of, of specifying these and then um, and then piping them through to the various endpoints. So that you can you can use them. Um, there's also the UI work that goes with this that you need to that, that one would need to think about, um, and that is the the authentication flows and actually doing a layout of these. So although what you get out of the box might work, kind of for testing purposes, you might then find that a final step would be to go through and uh, just you know change the CSS or add branding to make sure that the client is happy with whatever the branding looks like for this. Um, equally, if there's additional um, check boxes and things like that that are needed on here, just you know, adding those in. Um, and uh, of course, if you're supporting the delegation, um, there's a slightly more complicated flow we've talked about, uh, which is here. So, so this screen would need to be built that does the uh, the linked account piece, um, because that's probably not going to be out of the box. So it's a little bit more, um, a little bit more work to do on that side. Um, with the when we did this with the in, um, uh, um, what was it called identity server library, looking at the identity server library, uh, it's quite easy to customize the screens in that library. So it gives you a lot of them out of the box. You can change the CSS globally. Everything gets affected. Um, you can add new screens um, like this, this kind of linked account screen. Um, and so that, yeah, that was more straightforward. I don't know about other libraries. I can't talk to the PHP one and then the other .NET one we were looking at. So there might be a bit more complexity in adding the extra pages in there, depending on the library um, and the consent screen. Uh, which is out of the box in uh, identity server, at least. But might require some UI changes, as you can see here, this has been uh, tweaked. So it looks a bit more like, uh, like GLL. Um, yeah, How does I'm just gonna be a, an annoying process person. Um, so the the changes to the libraries that you mentioned and so forth, do those all have GitHub issues attached to them? Are those logged somewhere? The ones we will make. Yeah. yeah. You mean the what the ones to make the ones to make? Yeah, the ones that need to be made. Yeah. Uh, they do not have GitHub issues. I mean, I guess the the the, the changes update the model to, to match this document. Right. Yeah. But that we can make make an issue for that. I think I think that would be useful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. I think I think we do need those issues logged. I suppose, I suppose there's a, a chance that, uh, that this document is not quite the final draft, so it wouldn't make sense to raise it as an issue just yet. But uh, once once it's finalized, yeah, these do need to be more visible than than just mentioned on this call. I think. Yeah. 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 
Um, we could raise it in advance. I mean, you can raise it now referencing the doc and then obviously the doc will uh, come to fruition. Yeah, I, yeah, I have enough confidence to, to, uh, to think that's probably a good idea, yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. Okay. Uh, great. Does anyone have any uh, thoughts about was that was that helpful? Was that what you were expecting? Yeah, that's uh, that's very helpful. I've made a kind of list of five. Um, one and a bit of which I think we can sort of get started on now. That being you know, the open ID package and the customer stuff. Though, uh, I guess the, it, depending upon how to presumably so to, talking in the .NET world, presumably the models um, would get updated in OpenActive.net. The, the customer model would be added to OpenActive.net. Is that your yeah, um, that's thinking. right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, it probably makes sense for us to wait for that to be in place before otherwise we've got to write, build our own one, which doesn't necessarily make sense. Um, but I guess this comes back to your point at the beginning, which is if anybody has any implementation date requirements, then please let you know. We, we don't necessarily, um, uh, you know, from our side, it's, it's always been driven by the MCR active requ requirements. So, don't know is the answer to your next question, which is when do you need it by? Don't know. Mm -hmm. That's helpful. Uh, I mean, helpful to know that you need them uh, at least. Uh, yeah. So, sounds like we've got our. Um, uh, what are we saying here? So it's it's uh, we need the model models the spec. I literally said this a minute ago, but I can't remember what I said. So I'm just writing it down. Models and spec, uh, and something else first, and then guidance, um, reference docs and tooling second. Um, model spec and, oh, postman. Model spec and postman first, guidance, reference docs and tooling second. Is that what you understood, Matt? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, I don't think there are any breaking changes to the model that this is going to introduce, are there? No. No. So that's all. No. Yeah. Fairly low risk then in that sense. Well, yeah, this is it. I mean, the, uh, the idea here is that this gets implemented. I mean, anyone that's already done open booking, this is just a little bit of additional work on top of that rather than being, uh, you know, change everything. Mm. And open booking should still work as it did before. Cool. Okay, good. Okay, great. That's that's very helpful. So um, having those steps, and obviously, as you say, it's, it's MCR. So we might be able to uh, get a sense from MCR about their timescales on on that. Um, so that's that's a really helpful thing to ask. And it sounds like from a Gladstone perspective, we need to know what they need, which hopefully will come out in the next call in terms of um, whether they'd be happy with the models, the spec and postman uh, as well, or whether they would also want the um, guidance and, and the tooling to be um, to be updated. Uh, and, and I guess by when, because they might be able to estimate the work within a, within a reasonable, um, with, some, with some assumptions based on the document. Um, and then the, the, the need for a test suite obviously comes in terms of testing the work rather than in terms of building it. Yeah. Um, I have a potentially scary question that maybe shouldn't be on this call and maybe uh, should be discussed separately. Don't mind. Okay. Uh, basically, it's about the date format we use. Uh, it's specified everywhere to use ISO 8601. Uh -huh. My only concern for that is it's not an open standard. So we're asking people to adhere to something that we don't actually have any specifications for. The ISO standard for date? Yep, it's not open source. Oh, I see. I think to get a copy of it, it costs like two and a half grand or something. <laughs> there is a... a very close RFC that has, which is pretty much identical. 
that is open source. So, I mean, but again, I that is quite a high level, high level thing to note. That's a good question. I'm, I feel like never occurred to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a really good point. I don't think there's any reason why we can't use the RFC, assuming that's the same and bring, being broadly adopted by all the software. Because obviously mm. ISO stuff is in built into loads of things. Um, yeah, also, ISO stuff is built into loads of things. But of course, with software, you do have incompatibilities between them. And yeah. I've been involved in so many arguments where people are discussing ISO like uh, standards, but no one actually has a copy of the specification. So, huh. Very well, interesting. someone says they have a copy of a specification, but they might not. You never know. I'm trying because it's so widely used. I'm trying to think what's in the spec that's not sort of in the public domain in a sense, effectively. I, I um, don't know. The, the other thing is, mm. like, they, they do release several versions of it. Mm. So, we're not targeting a specific version. Uh, I'm just looking at the, the spec reference in the actual uh, uh, the standard has been revised uh, does it say oh yeah it does it targets 2004 version rather than 2019 version I see what you mean yeah uh, hmm. that's fun I mean we could update to the latest if there's a big difference I have no idea no, I have no idea either. Oh, and you have to pay for it. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. Yeah, well, so, yeah, we've, we've, we've referenced something which has a pay uh, uh, paywall in front of it. <laughs> exactly. All of the other ISO stuff is fine, but the time one is, um, is gated for some reason. Because they could make a mint. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> from governments uh, oh. that have to pay for it. <laughs> I mean, looking oh at the RFC write-up, it is very, very slightly different from 8601. Um, yeah, there's a little note on um, in the Wikipedia article for 8601 that says that um, RFC 3339 is basically a drop-in replacement for it, but has, has a few differences. Zero time offsets, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it basically like, allows a negative zero time offset, which ISO 8601 doesn't allow. Um, and it drops a load of the stuff about durations so that are really complicated that we don't want to use anyway. Okay, probably one for another W3C call, mm. I think. Um, rather than something urgently threatening yeah. the yeah. proposal as a whole, but I think it does, it does definitely warrant further discussion, yeah. Sounds like a good GitHub issue for one of the repos, doesn't it? For, it sure uh, does. Patient future discussion yeah i feel like i want to give like a little prize to nathan we need a sort of open standards <laughs> potter's prize um, uh, yeah definitely i have to think about uh i don't know what it is a bounty of some kind but points <laughs> <laughs> being prizes absolutely yeah um that's great that's that's great really helpful um and good to know know no, that now before we start going through any more Certification processes and get some inspired. Yeah. yeah. Um, great. Okay. Cool. So, um, I guess do we have any other uh, questions on this uh, or anything related to um, the document? Uh, not myself. I've made a few comments. Um, the main one is um, just tightening up when you use the uppercase or lowercase, like should must. Etc. Ooh. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. So very, just very important when that goes into the template. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good shout. Uh, okay. Anything yeah. else? Uh, no, most of my comments are just nitpicks. Great. Well, very welcome. Very welcome. That is absolutely about what it's all about. Um, great. Um, I don't know if um, uh, Debbie, do you have any reflections on on this and the process and reviewing or anything around it? Not currently, no. Great. Okay. Well, it sounds like it's when Gladstone gets hold of it, we'll find out all the things. 
um, and Matt seems fairly happy with it. So good. Okay. All right. All right. I'll stop sharing then. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Nick. That was Thanks, Nick. very useful. Um, yeah, I guess just uh, ping us when you're done and we can circulate for, for comment. And I guess one thing that worries me slightly is the review notes. Um, there's a fair few of those. So we might have to see how the next call goes. Might need some time boxing, but um, anyway, we can circulate and see what kind of feedback we get. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. Fantastic. Right, well, okay. I'll get on it. Thank you all for joining. We're at, we're at two o'clock precisely, so we can uh, pretend that this is what we were aiming for all along. <laughs> okay, thanks awesome. a lot all. Absolutely. Thanks, all right. Speak soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.